So now students continuing with the topic let us move on to other infections of CVS. First being myocarditis. Myocarditis refers to inflammation of the myocardium which is clinically manifested by chest pain, arrhythmias or congestive heart failure. It is rapidly progressive and often fatal. It can be caused by both infectious and non-infectious etiology. The infectious etiological agents include viruses are the most common agents, most common being coxsackievirus B followed by adenovirus, parvovirus B19, human herpes virus 6 and dengue virus. Parasitic agents such as Trypanosoma cruzi, the agent of Chagas disease. Bacterial agent, it is rarely caused by bacteria as a result of bacteremia, direct extension from contagious focus or a bacterial toxin. Laboratory diagnosis, endometrial biopsy can provide a definitive diagnosis. Evidence of viral infection by detection in peripheral samples or by serology provides only circumstantial evidence of possible etiology. Now coming on to pericarditis. Inflammation of the pericardium is clinically presented by one or more of the following manifestations chest pain, pericardial friction drop and pericardial effusion. It can be caused by both infectious and non-infectious etiology. The infectious etiological agents include viruses that are the most common agents such as coxsackie virus B, most common cause, ecovirus, adenovirus, HIV and others. Bacteria rarely may cause pleurent pericarditis usually as a complication of, com of pneumonia due to staph aureus, H. influenzae, meningococcus and pneumococcus. Mycobacterium tuberculosis can cause pericarditis usually a complication of pulmonary tuberculosis. Coming on to lab diagnosis, we have percutaneous pericardial biopsy or pericardiectomy with biopsy and drainage provide a definitive diagnosis. Evidence of coincident viral infection either by culture or serology is circumstantial. Pericardial effusion. <clears throat> now pericardial effusion uh, refers to the excess fluid pro production in the pericardial sac usually secondary to pericarditis or other causes such as malignant or autoimmune processes within the pericardium. Now coming on to infections of blood vessels. Mycotic aneurysm, infective and arthritis and device related infections are the main of them. Starting with mycotic aneurysm. My aneurysm refers to inflammatory damage and weakening of an arterial wall leading to a bulging of the arterial wall uh, that can eventually rupture. Though the word mycotic is used to denote fungi, mycotic aneurysm is used to describe aneurysms of any infectious etiology except syphilitic aortitis. The etiologic agents are similar to those that, are, that cause endocarditis such as streptococci and staphylococci. Infective end arthritis. Infective end arthritis refers to inflammation of the arterial wall which may occur with or without coexistent aneurysmal dilatation. Device related infection. This includes the infections of various devices inserted in the blood vessels such as central line, central venous catheters or in peripheral IV cannula. Cripsy, catheter related bloodstream infection. Severely ill patients in ICUs are often put on central line for administration of medications and parental nutrition. Central lines may get infected due to mishandling during insertion or during daily maintenance which leads to development of Cripsy. Cripsy is a major part of healthcare associated infection. Next coming on, suppurative thrombophlebitis. Suppurative thrombophlebitis, STP, is an inflammation of the vein wall. It occurs secondary to either dermal infection or use of indwelling intravenous catheters, the latter being the most common cause. IV cannulation, STP occurs frequently in hospitalized patients after 3-4 to four days of IV cannulation, example, vein farm, which gets colonized by the organism present on patient's skin or hands as normal skin flora of the healthcare workers. Okay, etiology, uh, common agents of STP include Staph aureus, members of Enterobacteriaceae and yeast, Candida and Melasiza. Limere syndrome, it's a condition characterized by thrombophlebitis of the internal jugular vein and bacteremia caused primarily by anaerobic organism, Fusobacterium necroforum, following a recent oropharyngeal infection. Okay, so now we start with acute dramatic fever. Acute dramatic fever or ARF is a multi-system disease that occurs in people previously affected with streptococcal group A, so sore throat, as a result of an autoimmune reaction. Although uh, uh, ARF may involve many parts of the body, almost all manifestations dissolve completely except the cardiac valvular damage which is called as rheumatic heart disease, RHD. 
A group uh, group A streptococcus uh, streptococcus pyogenes principally cause infection of skin and soft tissues and is discussed in later chapter. Now, starting with pathogenesis, primary ARF is a ma is mainly a disease of children of age five to fourteen years, and it is rare in person aged more than thirty years. However, recurrent episodes of ARF are more common in adolescents and young adults. There is no clear gender dissociation of ARF, but RSD more commonly affects females. ARF results following upper respiratory tract infection with group A streptococci, usually by M zero types one, three, five, six, fourteen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty four, twenty seven, and twenty nine. Genetic predisposition may play a, uh, a role. People with HLA DR7 and HLA DR4 appear to be more susceptible as compared to others. Pathogenesis is unclear. It may be due to autoimmune theory or cytotoxic theory. The autoimmune theory says that pathogenesis is based on theory of molecular mimicry. The antibodies targeted against streptococcal antigens and protein cross react with human tissue antigens, example heart and joints. These cross reactive antibodies bind to valvular endothelium. Leading to damage of the heart valves. Cytotoxic theory says that streptococcal toxins, example streptococcal pyogenic toxin and enzyme streptolysin O, are directly toxic to human heart. Uh, as far as clinical manifestation are concerned, the clinical manifestation usually appear after a period of three weeks following precipitating group A streptococcal infection. The prior streptococcal infection may be either subclinical, more common, or present as sore throat. Acute rheumatic fever affects heart, joint, skin, and brain. The common manifestation in O order of frequency include migrating polyarthritis. It is the most common manifestation characterized by migrating polyarthritis, hot, swollen, red, and or tender joints, which moves from one point to another over a period of hours. It is asymmetric and affects large joints, most commonly the knees, ankles, hips, and elbows. Uh, pancreatitis, effective endocardium, uh, pericardium or myocardium, uh, valvular damage is the hallmark leading to mitral valve regurgitation, most common, and aortic regurgitation. Okay. The myocardial inflammation may affect electrical conduction pathways leading to PR interval prolongation. Subcutaneous nodules occurs in as painless small mobile lumps beneath the skin overlying bony prominences, particularly on the hands, feet, and elbows. Chorea syndhams is the abnormal involuntary movement disorder mainly affecting head and limbs. Ethema migrantum. They are pink macular rashes that appear and disappear before the examiner's eyes. Okay. Now, diagnosis of ARF uh, is based on Jones criteria. The diagnosis of ARF is based on diagnostic criteria known as the revised Jones criteria 2015. It's based on the presence of a combination of typical these clinical features together with ECG and laboratory ESR CRP findings, which we'll see in the table. Supportive evidence of previous group A streptococcal infection within the last 45 days was a part of the previous version of Jones criteria 1992, which was diagnosed by detection of one of the following. Elevated ASO titrate, which will be much higher in patients with ARF than seen in patients with gas infection without ARF. A positive throat culture, rapid antigen test for gas, recent scarlet fever okay treatment for treatment penicillin is the drug of choice can be given orally as penicillin v or amoxicillin for 10 days or intramuscularly as single dose of 1.2 million units of benzathine penicillin g supportive treatment uh, example aspirin should be given for arthritis arthralgia and fever uh, as far as prevention is concerned, primary prevention includes timely and, and complete treatment of group A streptococcal sore throat with antibiotics penicillin within 9 days of sore throat onset, which will prevent almost all cases of ARF. And secondary manifestation of controlling ARF and RSDs uh, uh, is the mainstay. Like the patients with ARF had, are at much higher risk of developing recurrent ARF, therefore long-term penicillin prophylaxis are indicated to prevent recurrences. The drug of choice for secondary prophylaxis is the intramuscular benzathine penicillin G given every 4 weeks. In case of penicillin allergy, erythromycin 250mg twice a day can be given as an alternative. The duration depends on underlying carditis. ARF without carditis for 5 years after the last attack or 21 years of age, whichever is longer. ARF with carditis but no residual valvular disease for 10 years after the last attack or 21 years of age, whichever is longer. ARF with persistent valvular disease for 10 years after the last attack or 40 years of age, whichever is longer or sometimes lifelong profile access. 
so as we have completed this let us discuss the the modified jones criteria 2015 the major criteria include low risk population and high risk population a low risk population carditis clinical or subclinical whereas uh, again carditis clinical or subclinical and high risk population arthritis only polyarthritis in low risk whereas arthritis monoarthritis or polyarthritis and polyarthralgia polyarthralgia in low risk we have chorea and high risk also chorea now in low risk we have erythema myeginatum uh, which is same in high risk and also the subcutaneous nodules are common to both in minor criteria we see low risk population high risk population when low risk we have polyarthralgia here we have monoarthralgia hyperparesia more than 38.5 degrees celsius is common to both esr more than 60 mm per hour or crb more than 3 mg per deciliter is in low risk while esr more than 30 mm per hour or crp more than equal to 3 mg per dl is in high risk prolonged pr interval is in low risk while prolonged pr and which is same in the high risk also in diagnostic criteria in low risk we have in uh, initial arf and recurrent arf with the reliable past history of arf or rsd whereas in uh, high risk we have two main or major or one major plus two minor and two major or one major plus two minor or three minor criteria ESR stands for erythrocyte sedimentation rate, CRP is speed active protein, ERF is acute rheumatic fever, and RSD is rheumatic heart disease. Alright, so we have last expected questions. So question 1 says a 75 year old man was hospitalized with fever 101 degree Fahrenheit, severe back pain and weakness on the lower limbs. On examination, few non-tender small erythematous nodular lesions on soles were seen. Echocardiogram showed valvular vegetations on metal valve. From here we can diagnose like there is some vegetation of the heart valves he was diagnosed to have a cardiac valve vegetation three years ago a uh, laboratory test showed crp 2.5 mg dl esr 66 mm per hour leukocytes uh, 115.6 10.9 per dis per liter and creatinine 4.6 mg per dl two pair of blood culture was sent for which subsequently were positive for various streptococci the patient was immediately started on benzyl penicillin okay so the diagnosis resides in the terms of of like infective endocarditis right so we can give the clinical diagnosis and logical agents diagnostic criteria which is the dukes modified dukes criteria and the on how we collect the specimen we can uh, write in detail here okay question second says a seven year old female child presented on the cardiology opd with swollen red or tender joints which migrates from one joint to another knees Ankles, hips, elbows. Over a period of hours, the child was having abnormal gait. She also complained of painless small mobile lumps beneath the skin, overlying many bony prominences, particularly of the hands, feet, and elbows. On auscultation, murmur was heard over the mitral valve area. ECG showed prolongation of PR interval. On inquiry, it was found that the child had an episode of sore throat three weeks back. So, how to diagnose? If uh, some person had a sore throat three weeks back and it has now uh, progressed into a a major disease so we can uh, go in terms of your rheumatic fever because the child has abnormal gait and like such problems are there so it, the question is that what is the probable clinical diagnosis and etiological agent we can say uh, describe the condition diagnostic criteria we have to explain the uh, jones criteria modify jones criteria and how will you prevent the recurrence we have to give the primary and second prevention here okay so this completes our chapter number 27 and uh, next we'll be starting with bloodstream infections okay okay thank you for watching and like and share subscribe